Welcome everyone. This video will show you how to access and use your disease spread and impacts virtual lab. Hopefully you already have your Google Doc open. If not, make sure you do. Um, and then the first thing we'll do is follow this link to the lab website. So this is what the lab website is going to look like. This is a simulation that shows you basically the di dynamics for three or four different um, virtual diseases under some different conditions. So first thing we need to know is what we are looking at. Um, this square right here is going to be your disease field and the dots within it are your population, okay? Different color dots mean different things. A green dot is someone who is healthy and not infected and has never been infected. A red dot is someone who is currently contagious and infected. Um, if we run the disease, which I'll show you how in a little minute or in a bit, um, a blue dot, so basically if one of these red dots turns blue, or if one of the green dots turns blue, that means um, that person has become infected, they survived, and now their body has antibodies for the disease and they are therefore immune to it. So they are recovered and immune. Um, we'll talk later what it means when someone starts that way, but for right now, just remember a blue, someone that turns blue during the simulation has recovered and is immune, um, but they only became immune after catching the disease. So um, let me reset real quick. Um, so what else are you going to see? Um, up in this corner, it'll tell you the total population that is in your disease field, okay, your starting population. Um, you also have some parameters that you can set. Now, one of those parameters is going to be what disease you are looking at. So this, you can see there's cold, influenza, measles, and red death. Um, the first step in the lab asks you to make sure that you are set at the cold, that you're on a medium population density with no population mixing in the virgin field setting. And the virgin field just means a field that um, has not been altered in any other way. So that's, you can see our first step is set the simulation to virgin field, cold, medium density, no population mixing. And we don't have the option for vaccination in that. So what it asks you to do is select the details and record the contagious days, sick days, and death rate for each disease in the chart below, okay? So let's look at cold and see how you find that. So we're still set on cold. To find those parameters, you would click on details, and it tells you that the cold, you would be contagious for five days, um, the transmission rate is 10%, and the death rate is zero. So we'd X out of that. We come back over here, and you're contagious for five days. Transmission rate is 20%. I'm sorry, not 20%, 10%, getting ahead of myself, and the death rate is zero, okay? So we've recorded our parameters. It now asks you to run the simulation three times per disease and describe what you visually observe on the disease field and the graph um, on average and across the three simulations. So what does that mean? So if we come back here, we've got it set to cold, medium density, no population mixing. We're gonna hit this button, run, and it's going to show the spread of the disease over 100 days. Now you could see in that that we started with three infected people, the, pop, the disease kind of spread through the population, um, the green dots turned red, and then as they recovered, those red dots turned blue because they became immune. So afterwards, we're gonna look at a few things. This first one doesn't ask you to look at the afterwards, but so our death toll was zero, which we know, sick days were 2.9 per capita, okay? Um, if we look at our population field as it was running, we could see that the disease kind of slowly trickled through the population. It didn't spring up anywhere. Um, it didn't go super fast. It just slowly trickled. So when it's asking you about the disease field or the population observations, what it's asking is what happened to these blue dots? Well, not to the blue dots. What happened to the, um, what happened to the green dots? in the field. Did they turn red? Did they turn blue afterwards? What did the dots? One other thing is if a dot completely disappears, that means someone died during it, okay? How did the disease spread through the dots? Was it fast? Was it slow? Was it a wave? Was it a trickle? Describe how it spread through the dots in this part where it says disease field. And then the graph. You'll also see there's a graph over here showing how the disease spreads. Um, this red line is how many people are contagious at a given point. Blue is how many people are immune. Green is how many people are at risk or healthy. And I actually don't like their word at risk. We'll just say that the green line is people who have never been infected, okay? Um, 
So that's our code. What this lab, though, asks you to do, because this um, simulation is stochastic, which means that it's not going to turn out the same every time. So you're actually going to run the simulation three times per disease and then describe what you visually observe down here. So this was one run of the cold. We would run it again. And you can see that it spreads kind of a similar pattern. But you'll notice the graph lines didn't cross in this. It stayed in only half the population. And then we'll run it a third time. And for when it's asking for the visual, I want you to summarize kind of over the three, what was the average performance for the graph and in the disease field? What did you see on average? Okay. So then you would switch to influenza. Now, influenza has some different details, okay? Um, and I'm not going to do all of these steps, but you'd run influenza and then describe how that spread through the population. We'd run it three times. Same with measles, which you can see spreads very differently. Um, you'll be asked to figure out why that spreads differently. All right, and so then once you've recorded all of those observations, you will then work through and answer some analysis questions. The next section asks you to change the population density, okay? Um, so this one's gonna work a little bit different, but we're gonna actually gonna start with virgin field. We're gonna do influenza instead of um, cold for this one. And we're gonna start at a low population density with no mixing. So let's go over and set that. So we've got, we'll reset. We've got a virgin field, we've got influenza, low population density, okay? Now, the first thing this is gonna ask you to do is to record your starting population, okay? So our starting population at low density is over here. It is 200, okay? So we'd record that right here. Then we're going to run this three times, okay? Once, twice, three times. And on the third one, you record your sick days per capita and your death toll, okay? So both of those, we've got death toll of 0, 0 0.0, and sick days per capita was also 0.0, .0 on average, okay? And you describe what happens in the graph in the disease field. Then you would increase your population density to medium and record what happens, okay? So we would run it. You'd actually do that three times. And in this one, you can see that the death is non-zero down here, this black line, and some of the dots disappeared. So you'd record your death toll and your sick days on the third run. Um, now, if your third run is not like the other two, just do it again, and hopefully the fourth run will be more characteristic of the other two. Okay? So do that for low, medium, and high densities. You um, answer some analysis questions, and then you move on to population mixing. Um, with population mixing, we'll reset. Population mixing asks you to do a virgin field again, influenza, medium density. We're going to start with no population mixing, but... Um, We'll change that, okay? So what I wanna show you for this population mixing is what that means. So if we run um, a simulation with no population mixing, if we run it, you'll notice that the disease actually can't, like it's not jumping anywhere. The disease started here and here and here, and it's kind of radiating out from those points, okay? It's not showing up anywhere randomly in the population. So we'll let that finish its course. And you can see that it actually kind of was contained, okay? What if we had high population mixing, though? Um, I'm going to run and then pause. So you'll see, once again, we start with three infected people. But what happened was it didn't stay in those three little clusters. It popped up over here and here and here and here. And basically what happened is someone who was infected over here went to Walmart over here. Um, and infected someone else over here. People were not staying put, and so they were able to infect parts of the population that they were not immediately next to. Um, whereas with no population mixing, you can see that people can actually only infect the people immediately adjacent to them. Okay, they can't get over here, but high population mixing, they can, the, basically this person would come over here, infect someone over here, and then come back. So it's a way of introduce population mixing means we're introducing the disease into new unexposed parts of the population that are not adjacent to the infected ones. Um, so that is population mixing. So you would again record your death toll, sick days per capita, what you observe on the third runs, um, some analysis questions. Okay. Then the last one is vaccination, and vaccination is a little bit different. Okay. So we're going to set to a vaccination field. 
we're going to put it at high population density and we're going to say no mixing. Um, and we're actually going to use measles instead. I just find that measles makes, um, it's a better visual and you can see the effects of vaccination more clearly. All right, so if we run this with no vaccination, okay, everyone starts green, everyone gets infected and people either turn blue because they have been infected and recovered and are therefore immune um, or they die, which is when these dots disappear. Let's look though, let's say we started with 25% vaccination. You'll see that in this one, people are actually starting blue. So if someone starts the simulation as blue, like this person right here, it means they got their measles shot. Um, they've been vaccinated, they already have antibodies to the measles and they can't be infected even though they haven't been exposed to it. So blue can mean two different things in this one. If it starts blue, they have the vaccine. If it turns blue, they catch the disease, recover, and then are immune. Okay. So you'll run that on the different vaccines um, or vaccination populations, vaccination percentages, excuse me, um, record your observations and then answer some analysis questions. Okay. So that is our um, disease simulation virtual lab. If you have questions during it, please don't hesitate to contact me.